He started off in Los Angeles as a celebrity personal trainer. And then he was cast for a show at the time that I don't think anyone knew would, be, would make such a cultural impact on the United States as it has. And he has been the lead trainer on the show since the very first season. And he's the only trainer that's been on the show every single season since. And that is The Biggest Loser. He's gone on to be an award-winning author with three best-selling books. And he starred in multiple best-selling videos. He is easily among America's most beloved personal trainers. Could you please help me welcome to the stage Bob Harper. I have my phone in my hand. He's ready Sorry. for pictures, you're ready for everything. So it is a thrill to have you here. And I already know my first question before we give an opportunity to the crowd to ask questions of you. I already know my first question. You were born in Nashville, Tennessee. Actually, I was born in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. I was raised in Tennessee. You were raised in Tennessee. Yeah. Okay, so actually my point still, still taken, amazing cities, amazing areas, but not necessarily considered the center of health and fitness in no. terms of places that you might be raised. No, I actually grew up on a farm in uh, Tennessee and I really enjoyed it because I was so active. I mean, it was just, it wasn't uh, this ideal like urban culture that I grew up around, but I grew up on a farm. My summers were uh, working on a farm when all my friends were going to like these really fantastic summer camps. It was like, I dreaded I dreaded uh, summer vacation. I was just like, I'm gonna be working the whole time, getting up at five o'clock in the morning and like, you know, herding cattle and moving and, and being active. So you were a farm boy then? I did not know that. Yep, I was a farm boy. Because my question was, as somebody who's gone on to influence so many people in the health and fitness space, consumers and other professionals, did you grow up sort of always being interested in being active and, or is that something that you sort of took up as later in life. It was just something that was part of my life and I find it really interesting now uh, when, because I work a, a lot with children and I see just how sedentary so many kids are now. And uh, I grew up where it was just understood that you were outside playing until the sun came down. That was, um, that was basically the rule. And then we'd go in and we'd have our meal, watch a little TV, get, go to bed and do the sa exact same thing the next day. So you're always active growing up. Always active. How about nutrition as a kid? Well, growing on a far growing up on a farm, I mean, we had a garden that we grew our own food. We had cattle that we would eat. I mean, we had these huge uh, r freezers in our um, basement that just had endless supply of um, protein. So I look back at that time and I think how cool that was. I mean, we, I, we knew exactly what we were, what we were eating. Uh, we knew what was uh, in the soil that, uh, that was in the vegetables. So it was a different time. So nobody could plan to go on to become the iconic personal trainer that you had been. So how did it all happen? I mean, you moved to LA. Yep. I remember you teaching classes and training celebrity clients. I remember that. I lived in, in LA at the time. Um, and then this show comes along to cast. And you know, with a name like The Biggest Loser, before we sort of understood what an impact it would make on TV and you know, reality TV and health and fitness, um, what was it like when that first happened? And what were the first few seasons like? Well, it was very controversial in the very beginning because the name, The Biggest Loser, is a weight loss show. Uh, people were very concerned about it. They thought that it was going to be a, a show that was going to be made, we were going to be making fun of overweight people. And my partner and I, Jillian Michaels, she and I were very, very serious about this job and we were in no way going to be making fun of anyone because these people had given our um, their lives to us and we were going to figure it out. We were going to just do our part to see what we could do to uh, to help the people that we were working with. And it was very interesting because in the very beginning, like no one had ever done this before. And so we were literally like, I, because I was the celebrity fitness trainer. I was the guy that was getting these girls from a size four to a two or a zero now. I don't even know the numbers anymore. But uh, same with guys. The guys that would come in and be like, you know, I want to turn my six pack into an eight pack. And so it was a different, like a different warped way of thinking. And so all of a sudden I'm working with people that were just trying to get their lives back. They were trying to be around to walk their kids down the aisle. And uh, it was it was a whole new way of approaching. And, and I'm the guy that knows everything about diet, 
everything about exercise, and I had to throw everything out of the window when I first started working. Those first few seasons were very challenging. So was it, it sounds like it went more from being about fitness to being about health. Without a doubt. I, people, are always, people always ask me, what's more important? Is it, is it your diet or is it exercise? And I'm, I'm a CrossFitter. I love to exercise more than anything in the world, but it is all about diet. I mean, and when people really start to get their brains wrapped around what they're eating, how they're eating, then your exercise, yes, has tremendous benefits. But I really want to get people attached to exactly what they're doing in the kitchen. Because what, you work out an hour a day. Uh, what do you do in those other 23 hours? So th this will require you to kind of think back over across a lot of seasons. But um, as a trainer myself, I'm really interested in, in sort of knowing who is the most inspiring person on The Biggest Loser that you worked with, and then also who is the most challenging, and why for both? <gasps> That's a good question. Well, um, one of the most inspiring, I don't know if she's here, a friend of mine, Olivia Ward, she, uh, she was a, a girl that won season 11, and this girl was absolutely fantastic. You know, she came in so palms up, ready to go, ready to do um, anything that she could, and uh, she and I are friends to this day. She teaches soul cycle classes here in the city. She's like really transformed her life. Now, the most challenging, there's always one every single season that just, you, you know, tests me. But I remember there was one, uh, there was one season, I think it, was, it might have been season seven, there was a girl named Joelle, and she and I had this very big, the, the, the video went viral, it was like me absolutely losing my mind in the gym. Like, losing my mind. I won like a soup, uh, one of the, you know, that soup show on E, like they, they gave me an award for it because I just lost my mind so biggest much. Biggest meltdown? Uh, yeah. <laughs> biggest yeah. meltdown, yeah. Yeah, it was like the, the biggest meltdown and it was me. <laughs> so what, what, is, what is the difference between the people on the show who seem to flip the switch and those that maybe don't? And I, I know that all of them, you know, any success you have at any level is great. Making progress towards a goal is great. But for those that go on to kind of flip the switch, is there... Is there a sort of a certain characteristic of those people of what they figure out? Well, on our show, a lot of times there's always going to be the game players that come in and they really want to win the show and they're going to do whatever it takes to, uh, to, to win. You know, they're going to they're do everything that's being um, asked, asked of them. But it's the people that I really feel like that don't necessarily feel like they ever have a chance at winning the show that... Um, we get more success out of because they're there for the reason for that one reason and that is to get their their health back and their lives back and so uh because i really do think it's really difficult to sustain this quote unquote healthy lifestyle because it's something that you have to have in your mind every single day the people that come on to uh, my show they're addicts and they're they're people that have that very addictive um, mentality and so I'm getting them to manage their addiction and to be able to get through the rest of their lives knowing that okay you're gonna have your ups you're gonna have your downs but if you can just try to stay on course as much as possible you're gonna be ahead of the curve so this is a personal question. Um, what I want to know is... I have so many jokes in my head right now. I'm trying so hard. I'm like... Because I'm, I'm listening to I'm you. I'm gay. And I, I came out a couple <laughs> of seasons ago. <laughs> Not that personal. Okay. A lot less personal. <laughs> Sorry. And whether or not up here is the trainer you want to share it, this is your choice. But um, do you ever have like a cheat day? And what does a Bob Harper cheat day look like? I mean, are you all kale all the time or... And when you go off the wagon, like if we saw you have an epic meltdown that was a cheat day on a Saturday night, what would it look like? What would it look like? What's your thing? I, I really, I'm not going to say I never cheat because that would, uh, that's not the truth. I, I, I'm really aware of my eating all the time. And if you follow me on social media, you always see I'm, I'm posting my food because I'm like, I'm dialed in. I'm dialed in at all time. I'm one of those guys that like, you know, I'm going to go to Vegas and put it all on black. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm all in. And, uh, 
with that said, if there is something that I'm craving or if it's something uh, that is a cheat meal that I'm going to want, then I'm going to have it. But I really, what I try to teach people and I practice what I preach is that we can't have that mentality of children where, where if you have kids, you know, it's like they want what they want when they want it. And it's like you got to like realize that there's got to be a set of guidelines. You can't just have anything and everything that you want. There's got to be a, a certain set of rules to live by. I live by rules. I like rules. I like I like lists and I like rules. We didn't get the food, did oh, we? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, I just want to know is it fries? Is it brownies? Is it yeah, because I'm more savory than su- savory than sweet. And if- oh, that was a very good answer. I have to admit, you had me, and then I wanted to know the food. Yeah, so, so it's like I'm gonna go. Like you said, French fries. Now it's like all I can think about are French fries. I want French fries right now, but I'm never gonna like. I can always pass up uh, sugar. I have a I have a real real hatred toward sugar. Well, speaking of that, I know that you have yeah you have a special relationship with sugar because I follow you and I, know I have that- a bad relationship with yeah, sugar. Yeah. And, uh, and you're, you're, you know, you're really adamant about your point of view in terms of sort of how sugar has impacted the diet of America and actually, you know, soon to be the world, as opposed to many things that people say are the problem with bad nutrition. Sugar's a really big one for you. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I really try to get people, and going back to the way that I grew up, when we talked about being on the farm, like eating more whole foods. It's like I'm, I'm very much, and what works for me is that uh, I, I, I pretty much stay away from starchy foods, and I, uh, I get good fats all the time. I get like uh, good proteins and lots of vegetables. Uh, I think people get so um, turned around when it comes to nutrition and all the misinformation that's, um, that's out there. And people, people have given fat a bad rap. And like, I think that fat is essential. And uh, I think that when it comes to sugar, people are like, you know, it was like that time when like all those low fat, non-fat, options came out and everyone was just like, oh my God, this is so great. There's no fat in it. And I mean, we all gained weight from it. It's like, because all that sugar just turns into fat. So it's like, I really try to get people aware of how much sugar they're eating in a day, which a lot of times they're not even aware of it. It's like you spend a week or a day and just kind of like look at, read all your nutrition facts, see where all those hidden sugars are and, uh, and try to eliminate those out of your diet. And I guarantee you, you're going to feel better. So in addition to that, I'm, I'm thinking a little bit about sort of um, all the things you've done to help people. So nutrition's one big one. You preach nutrition, you've done videos, you've done books, you've done the show. Um, what is your favorite thing to do in this space in health and fitness? And then what is it you wish you got to do more of? Uh, one thing that I get to do a lot that I really love is doing exactly what we're doing right now. I love talking to people. I love uh, answering questions because I do. I, I am very opinionated, as you as, as you see. I like talking with people. I, I, it, I have that I have that gift of gab. So it's like whenever I get to travel the country and and talk to people and just give them some sort of um, morsel in their brain to think about. If I can do that, then I've done my job. It's like I love the platform that I've been given, and I get and I. I take it very, very seriously. I love this whole health fitness element um, uh, that I'm in, this, this world that I'm in. And it's like, and I really feel like I have a lot to say about this and I want to be able to help people as much as I possibly can. So I love it. So with that in mind, a little bit of advice. I think our group would love to hear this. The show, The Biggest Loser, is really about massive transformation because we can't be there every single day. So we're seeing massive transformation. I have to be there every yeah, day. <laughs> exactly. And I think it, many people might get the impression that it's, you know, you know, changes like that happen really quickly, which we know they don't and they take a long time. What what are some of the things that or some big changes can happen quickly, but what what advice would you give to people who are just starting off whether it's fitness or better nutrition? Is there sort of your go-to step 1? Yeah, I mean, I think that the go-to step one would be to not try to change too many things initially. People get so wrapped up. That's why it's like January 1st. I'm just like, oh, here we go again. Here we go. Everyone's going to be like, I'm getting my gym membership. I'm going to only eat, you know, chicken and, and brown rice and all. It's like this. And after what, like 10 days, 15 days, all those people have left the gym. They're like, oh, I'm sore. I don't like this. I'm not in it. So it's like I tell people one thing. If this is going to be your quote unquote lifestyle change, realize that this is something that you're gonna be doing for the rest of your life. Find one thing that you can do. 
if it's if it's cutting out sugar for a week, see how that feels. If it means that you're going to go to the you're going to you've decided that you're going to go take your first CrossFit class, go take that CrossFit class. And then you can always build from there. I think that less is more in the very beginning. So one thing that's been an amazing transformation in health and fitness over the last 10 years is technology being an influence. Obviously, Apple is a technology company, so it's near and dear to our hearts. But there are so many ways that people can be engaged in a healthier and fit lifestyle with apps and technology. Tell us a little bit about how you feel about what's how it's transformed. I, I mean, I, I love all the apps that are out there. I love the, the fact that we're all so attached to our smartphones. We all have our, I mean, I'm, I'm carrying my iPhone out with me here because we're all attached to it. We, we, we there you go. I love <laughs> technology and I like be again, when I say I like numbers and I like charts and goals. So it's like everything can just be right there. Now you can have your Apple watch, you can have your phone, everything's on there. There's like a guideline now that, uh, that people really respond to. I love it. I love being able to have something that I can look at to tell that tells me how many calories I'm burning. I, I, th I what what I'm eating. There's so many uh, great fitness apps that are out there that are just literally telling you eat this, stay away from that, and it's it's right there in the palm of your hand. And I think that like it's just fantastic. Now I know you've been involved in a number of apps, but there's one um, I believe by the company Daily Burn. You're yeah. in a and I, I've seen the video, I've looked at the sort of preview, and it, I think the title is, I'm going to see if I get this right, Black Heat? Black Fire. Black Fire. Black Fire. Black Fire. I'm so scared of the title already. Like, yeah, Black Fire. So no. tell us a little bit about that one. Because, I mean, you're, there are a lot of people that see you on TV, but this is the way they can actually see you at home, right? Yeah. In the comfort of their own home. Yeah. Uh, I really like it because... Being in the fitness business for as long as I have, I used to be the guy that just wanted to run. I wanted to do like a, a longer workouts that uh, I felt like were doing the most benefit. Well, so much more research is out now and uh, the option of just high interval training, working anaerobically for a shorter amount of time, the benefits that that has. And like, that's what Black Fire has basically been built on. It's like, again, I say, you know, I'm a CrossFitter and that's what I, uh, that's, that is what my exercise is. I like to be able to do a workout that sometimes is going to be 10 minutes and it's going to be the 10 hardest minutes of my life. It's like, I, I, I and that's why I built uh, Black Fire with that in mind. I want, I want you to be able to, have to fall down on the ground when you're done. It's like, because <laughs> misery loves company, and if I got to do it, I want them to do it. <laughs> well, the good news, at least you can do it at home. You don't have to do it That's right. at the gym. So um, speaking more of technology, I know you've been a big fan of the Apple Watch. You mentioned it. I've even gotten a couple heartbeats from you, which is kind of fun, uh -huh. and messages. Tell us what your favorite feature is. I mean, this is all a new space. So yeah. what is the, one of the things you love? I, I, I love the Apple Watch. I mean, I, I had it was one of those things that like, I was always... I waited for it. I wanted it. I wanted it on my arm. I love gadgets. I love the cool element to it. And just those like those things that are so simple, like I can like send my heartbeat, you know, little little taps, all those like just personal things I'm a, I'm a real big fan of. I love the fitness element to it. Like I know that when I start my workout, I'm going to tap my little um, fitness uh, tracker and I'm going to go. And it's like I get real excited to see if I'm meeting all my goals and one thing that I found really interesting, it told me that I didn't stand up enough. And I literally was like, are you kidding me? I feel like I'm standing up all the time. And now all of a sudden I get this vibration. And it's one of those things, it's like, uh, uh, I feel like I'm in military school or something. I get this feeling, I'm like this, yes, it's time for me to stand up, okay? I'm, 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 I'm You comply. Uh, yeah. So um, the first time, I want to tell you, the first time I sent him my heartbeat, I didn't get like a nice little drawing back. I got, why is your heart rate so high? That was, it was already like prescriptive. He's like, are you, what are you doing? I'm nervous. I'm worried. I know it, like, that's cool too. Cause I like seeing my resting heart rate. And it's one of those things like I'll, I'll lay, I'll be laying in bed, get my watch, put it on before I move or, yeah, or do anything. I'm just like, okay, where's my resting heart rate right now? So you mentioned a couple of times you're a CrossFitter. I mean, I know you're involved in many elements of the fitness industry, and certainly you've trained in a lot of different ways, but CrossFit is a really kind of big part of your life, especially right now. What's the appeal for you? What, why do you enjoy it? 
there's a sense of community with CrossFit that I really uh, respond to. I love the fact I was just in DC uh, with Greg Glassman, the creator of CrossFit, and uh, th- any chance I can get in a room with other CrossFitters and we can we can commiserate, we can just like go, uh, we can we can bond. I know that like if I see uh, a guy or a girl in a rogue T-shirt or some crazy thing on their T-shirt that tells me that they're doing CrossFit, I can go right up to them. And we can have a conversation about anything. And so it's like I love that. And I think that um, whatever it is that you get excited about when it comes to fitness, I'm all in because people are like, well. What about other workouts, Zumba, Soul Cycle, all these, you know, all these other things? I'm just like, listen, whatever you're into, I love it. CrossFit just happens to be something that I respond to. I like it. I am challenged. I, uh, I feel like when I first started doing it, I dreaded it. I, I, every stoplight or stop sign that I was going to um, the, the gym that I work out, I was just like, turn around, go home, don't do this. And... I'm going to jump head first into something that I'm afraid of. So I'm curious, what's next for you? You've done a lot of things in the health and fitness business, and uh, I'm wondering whether there's something on your radar that you haven't been able to do that you want to do or... Well, there is something, uh, because I'm about to start season 17 of The Biggest Loser. We go and... Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. Like, I'm tired. Uh, but there, it's going to be very different this season. And I made the mistake of talking about what it was in some interview, and I was just, uh, you know, all of a sudden, they had to get her, you know, pulled out. And they said, you can't talk about this yet. But season 17 is going to be a very big, uh, uh, there's going to be some very big changes, and I'm very excited about it. So that's kind of where my head is right now. Uh, I am also definitely um, working on a new book right now and a book idea. And uh, one thing that I'm really wanting to jump into is that as much as I love cooking, uh, I want to do a cooking show. Because the cooking shows that I see out there, they're so, you know, it's like, it's those southern cooking, just like, I'm sitting there going like, are you kidding me? And of course, they're like, maybe your stuff's going to be too healthy. I'm like, it. I don't, I, I don't understand. It's like, I want to do a cooking show where it's like, yeah, it's healthy, but it's going to be flavorful and it's not going to be like, you know, steamed vegetables. I mean, they get, they're so nervous about this right now. So are you a good cook? I'm a really good cook. <laughs> okay, we're going to get another piece of personal information. Favorite dish then. If you're going to cook the meal, what's the meal look like? The meal that you would enjoy the most? Wow. Um, I just started uh, playing around with this uh, curry. I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, it's this curry. That, and I do it with, instead of uh, rice, I make, um, I make coconut rice. I'm sorry, not coconut rice, cauliflower rice, where I just get like a uh, chocolate. Coconut up. rice sounded better. Yeah, <laughs> cauliflower rice. It's so, so good though. It's like I made a whole paleo meal for some friends of mine recently, and they were just like, okay, w- let me see what you got. So I made this curry. I did it with um, the, the cauliflower rice. It was fantastic. They loved it. So it's like they were, like, they were so surprised at how good it was. Well, let's hope the cooking show makes it to the air. It would yeah. be great to see Chef Bob. <laughs> Chef Bob. So I would love um, if any of you would like to join in the conversation, if you have a question for Bob. Hi. I know you eat like healthy, but what do you think about flexible dieting and if it fits your macros? No. Oh, yeah. N- I mean, No. At, at, at no point would I ever say eat a donut because like because that goes back to the thinking of a calorie is a calorie and we all know if you still think that a calorie is a calorie it's just not it's not the case anymore it's what 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 the process it does to your body so a cal- uh, what a two a donuts I would guess 200 calories I'd rather you have 200 calories of something much more substantial that's going to be able to satiate you where that uh, donut is just probably going to make you go up crash down, and then you're going to want to binge. 